From time immemorial, Asura have been builders and inventors, utilizing magic as other races use simple tools. Although not as old a race as the dwarves, they were a far more active one, spending their time on constant invention, experimentation, and the dissection of magic itself. According to the records of the eldest archivists of their race, there were at least six cities as large and grand as Ratasum in the Asura-dominated lands beneath the surface, though none survived into the modern age. While other races insist that the legends of such massive capitals as Kor Asum are far-fetched and exaggerated, the Asura tersely reply that the other races are simply too dim to comprehend the grandeur that they lost. What is up guys and welcome to another video. So with the recent patch, with the recent flare back in my mind for where the story could be going, I want to talk to you guys today about the mystery of Rata Novus and the fate of its people as I do genuinely believe of everything on the totem pole of things that may be about to be answered. This is pretty high up there for having a, you know, a real chance of being resolved. And also, of course, it ties into so many awesome Asuran-based stories. And who doesn't love some Asuran-based stuff? So today we're going to be talking about not just Rata Novus, the unexpected and awesome city, Asuran abandoned city we get to visit in the expansion that I totally wasn't expecting. You know, basically, basically it's a Savari-based expansion in a jungle and all of a sudden we ended up essentially in the depths of Tyria for a while. Uh, not only do I want to talk about this, but I also want to shine a spotlight on the character who founded the city as revealed in Heart of Thorns, uh, an Asuran inventor named Zin. So let's get started. So I'll give you guys a crash course on this man. Uh, Zin was uh, originally a bit of a joke character that the devs dropped in shortly after Eye of the North ended. They added a series of free quests players could uh, access that would unlock a new hero for you, a dervish golem hero known as M.O.X. And so the story here is that a Golemancer, who was an apprentice of another renowned Golemancer we'd met in the actual core Eye of the North story, Ula, we'll talk about her very soon, uh, this Golemancer, Zin, um, had accidentally, shall we say, unleashed some pretty deadly golems on the bookers of the world and needed our help. He was demonstrated to have an underground secret lair you had to stumble upon for yourself uh, in the Maguma jungle. Uh, after this happened, and because Ula saw him as a threat owing to his prowess as a, as a Golemancer, uh, there was a sham trial where Zin uh, was kicked out and exiled from Asuran society. Uh, so these were the original quests, these were the original uh, little stories of Zin. It's a very important to note, as I continue to talk about this wonderful character I like very much, he was essentially written as a bit of a joke character and a bit of a reference. Uh, he's actually re referencing Invader Zim. Yeah, you remember that cartoon show? from when you were a lot younger. Hell yes, that was a good cartoon show and he's actually a reference to it. So as we start talking about all this really cool and interesting stuff, do try to counterbalance it with the fact that this guy's a fairly jokey, funny character with an incompetent golem ally, G-O-X, who also is actually referenced in Guild Wars 2 also. But we'll get to that in a second. So... Upon being exiled from his people, what does Zin do? Well, he helps the bookers a little in the Crichton Civil War in some of the later updates, and that's about it. We didn't know much else of him. He kind of just fell into the background. Now, there were some theories about him. Theories specifically that he could have been one of the original founders of the inquest, and these are still absolutely on the table. Nothing in Heart of Thorn has written them out. But beyond this, the devs have given us the next chapters to his life. So it starts really the original reference in Heart of Thorns is as it happens, even before you learn about Rata Novus or anything, it's in the Auric Basin where you can return to that exact same spot you could play at in Guild Wars 1 and this time drop down, down the Magus Falls to the location where the entrance of his secret lair was and here you will find a powered down golem and a couple of Dermond Priory NPCs examining it. This was fantastic, a huge highlight for me to actually see a small reference to Zin and his lab there. But they went even further than this because of course as the story progresses you realize that the Exalted in the area had been collaborating with some Asura and these were the Asura of Rata Novus, the legendary lost city of which Zin had a apparently founded in the years after curtains closed on Guild Wars 1. 
So those are two of the references that came and, and the big things from Heart of Thorns. You guys might be curious to hear though, that these aren't actually the first time Guild Wars 2 has talked about Zin. See, before the expansion, there was a reference to him in the way of an Ascended Trinket. And I want to talk to you guys about this because it is pretty fascinating what the devs are hinting at here, even though at first it might look really basic. So the Ascended Trinket, the reference Zin before Heart of Thorns, had this flavor text. It said that this was a rare copy of Zin's research into the power of souls. Wait, hold on, what? That's telling us that Zin wasn't doing anything with Golomancy, wasn't doing anything to do with founding a city, but was actually doing research into the power of souls. That might seem like a bit of an outlier, but actually, when you look a little deeper, you might find that this makes perfect sense. And I want to go into this line of discussion because souls are such a hot topic at the moment, specifically because of the Forsaken Thicket and the raids. So over in the raids, we have the question of what are the White Mantle slash Bandits slash Massart doing with all these souls? They seem to be ripping souls away from people. They seem to be storing it in Bloodstone, transporting off somewhere. They're doing something with it. Well, the game has long been demonstrating that you can use souls to meet various ends. And specifically, this seems to have something to do with Golomancy. Uh, see, the Massart are well-known manipulators of souls, the, the constructors of the soul batteries and so forth. And the Massart, funnily enough, seem to have golems of their own. Right back in the previous game, we saw a lot of them, the Jade Constructs, uh, these creatures that the Massart would summon for themselves to uh, help protect them in battle or do the heavy lifting and the task that these great spellcasters didn't want to do themselves. Very similar to the Asura. Think back as well to, say, Metrica Province, okay? And in Metrica Province, there's a skill challenge at Ula's Lab. Uh, where you have to do some basic reading comprehension. Ula tells you a bunch of things. A hologram of her tells you a bunch of things. You answer it, you get it correct. And what does Ula say? This great Golomancer from many years past. Ula says that Golomancy and Necromancy are destined to be intertwined, that there is some connection here. So is it really so crazy to think that Zin was uh, some, as a Golomancer, was also doing research into soul power? Well, no, it's not. And especially when you consider this, Zin was actually Ula's apprentice. Ula is the one who got Zin banished in the first place. And I like that. I like going down that line of thinking. And I like to think that ArenaNet are setting up some cool parallels between the Asura, basically, in their pursuit of uh, magical power and strength and building golems as well, with the Massart, another race of very powerful spellcasters, but this time an ancient one that have had many years to hone their craft. So the suggestion here being that many years ago, the Massart went through this same research period, this same phase where they were trying to figure out how to create golems for themselves, and they learned about uh, the power of souls, they became great manipulators of souls, and that's how they created their golems, and now the Asura that we know are following in their footsteps, essentially. And this isn't for what it's worth the first time, a really cool parallel has been set up between the Asura and the Massart. I take your attention back to the release of the game, and Ara Path 2. In this path, we learn quite clearly about how the Massart, uh, once upon a time, seemed to have betrayed their allies by fleeing, slipping out of phase with, rea with reality, with Tyria, and abandoning their friends to the Elder Dragons. And this was some big betrayal in theory. Uh, this is what the Massart did way back when. And in Path 2, we have the modern day Asura, members of the Inquest, seeking to do the exact same thing. So there are these great interesting connections between the two. I'd mention as well that, uh, what did I tell you guys a second ago? Zin uh, got banished from uh, his homeland, from the Asuran lands, but before he founded Ratanovus, what did he do? Well, he went to war against the Massar in the Crichton Civil War and helped reinstate the monarchy in Krita. And he actually, uh, through doing this, learnt to extract power and essence from dead seers, the once upon a time mortal enemies of the Massart. So he's been heavily involved with this race and maybe he picked up some tips or it t it is understanding of the world of the way magic and souls work uh, in his pursuits of Golomancy to necromancy. And for whatever reason, perhaps because this was quite a sinister thing he was now uh, faced with having to do to further his golem research, he ended up moving away from this and founding a city. So isn't that interesting? Let's talk about this city. This is Rata Novus, as Zin called it. He made himself the High Counselor. Has a lot of very interesting facts about it. Now, you may already be able to identify one just based on this story I've already given you. And that is that Rata Novus is, as far as we know, the only or, or the first city ran by Asura 
to be made of Asura that are returning to the depths instead of just being from the depths. Because think about it, the timeline is this. Uh, the Asura all live happily underground. Places like Korasum exist. Uh, they have these great, amazing cities. Uh, then Primordus stirs. The destroyers become active. They are forced to the surface through earthquakes, through enemy activity, and they learn about the surface world and they flourish there. Zin is on the surface world. He gets exiled from the surface world, hangs out on the surface world in Kryta, then chooses to go back underground. This is a city where they've gone back to the depths in defiance of the Elder Dragons. And that's pretty cool that even you can see how this has affected the construction of the city. While you're in there in the personal story for Hearththorns, uh, you can talk with Timey a little about how there's natural light down there. And this is because the people of Rata Novus had been to the surface and they'd ran like optical wires down. So you would actually get sunlight deep be below the ground, even without needing any power. You wouldn't find normal Asura cities presumably doing something like this. It wouldn't be common, but because of the unique circumstances of this city's construction, it was. There are a few other things that make it unique too, and specifically these come down to the fact that it was founded by Zin. One question should be in your mind right now, and that is, why? I mean, yes, he was exiled, but it's a big world up there. Why wouldn't you just go somewhere else on the surface? Why would you return to the dangerous place? Nothing I've told you about Zin's story so far seems to suggest he did it because he has some great agenda against the Elder Dragons. And yet that seems to be what one of the primary things Rata Novus was founded for was. Uh, so there are two things really. Number one is this was a secret place. Only the best, only the brightest would be invited. Uh, its existence was kept hush hush. And this would allow the Asura who go underground to perform questionable, shall we say, research. Research that is perhaps ethically, morally ambiguous. And uh, maybe they don't want to be restricted by the likes of a council or something from elsewhere. So. This was a bastion for people like-minded to Zin, other exiles, people that generally believe the ends justify the means. And this all makes perfect sense. I can absolutely see Zin, the kind of character he is, the life he's lived, founding this sort of city. Uh, at this point, I would also draw your attention back to the inquest. These theories before Heart of Thorns came out that Zin was the founder of the inquest may still work because Rata Novus was still in line with very inquesty type activity. In fact, in my opinion, the greatest uh, theories here is that out of the ashes of the destruction of Rata Novus, that's when the inquest come back to the surface or the, the citizens of Rata Novus move to the surface and start calling themselves the inquest and continue their activities just slightly less secret secretively uh, because you know they were destroyed before while they were underground that that's definitely an area you can go so so this area all makes sense this is this is Zin's founding of a city where his research can flourish but what about the other thing that Rata Novus was doing a lot of? Quite a noble thing, something that absolutely counterbalances a lot of the other stuff they were doing here in the city of the future today. What about the part where the Rata Novans cared a whole huge amount about fighting the Elder Dragons? Uh, to quote Timey here, These Rata Novans had a serious beef against Primordus. Uh, and it was, of course, in their dragon research lab that we find out we're playing Pokemon and there's something super effective against every single one of the Elder Dragons. Uh, for what it's worth, in this room, when you go there in Heart of Thorns, the, these images you see in the background, it can actually be translated. Some people made some attempts on Reddit a long time ago, like around release. Um, I believe that that's actually supposed to say brain, not not strain there. Uh, it doesn't really provide a, an incredible amount of information, but the Rata Novans cared about the Elder Dragons. This is very progressive. Can I point out, you guys might think now, from a Guild Wars 2 perspective, that, oh, some Asura who care about saving themselves from the Elder Dragon, big whoop, why is that so weird? It is kind of weird. It is very progressive because you've got to think about the timeline of when Rata Novus was founded. This is during a period of time where Primordus, one of the Elder Dragons, sort of stirred and sort of did some stuff and seriously affected the Asura, don't get me wrong, but then didn't actually awake and just stopped and just laid there. Not a single other Elder Dragon was known to be doing anything at this time. They didn't even necessarily know they existed. By the time Jormag woke up, the second of the Elder Dragons to do anything at all, by the time he woke up, the city of Rata Novus was on its last legs. It was destroyed just a handful of years later, like five years after Jormag woke up. These people were obliterated, or what we find of them, at least, that was left over, was destroyed. And so they really cared about fighting the Elder Dragons, even when nobody else 
truly appreciated that threat. Of course the Asura did, and this is because the Asura are very smart, they're very forward thinking, but also because at this point, the other races haven't been affected as severely as they have. They lost their home at this point. The Norn is still just meandering about, the humans are still doing their thing, the Char is still doing their thing, the Tenga is still doing their thing, nobody cares. But these Asura did, and these select few in this city did. And that that's really cool. I like this idea that uh, there are some really reprehensible things that these Asura in Rata Novus might have been doing, but then there are also these very noble, very awesome things that they were also doing at the same time. And maybe as to why Zin seemed to care about this a lot, Maybe he didn't. Maybe it was just uh, some other Asura who had come under his fold, come to live in the city, that they understood the threat, and they used Rata Novus's resources. They were the ones who collaborated with the Exalted in the Maguma jungle, and they were the ones that had been focusing a lot more on taking their home back from this Elder Dragon. So, this is the founding of the city. This is about as far as we ever hear about Zin. He was High Counselor. There were many things in this city that were very similar to Ratasoom for its worth. They had a High Counselor, it was Zin. They had peacemakers, people who protect it just as Ratasoom does. Ratanovis did also. So what happened to the city? Why is it, as the New Hawk call it, uh, now a forbidden pit of despair. They don't even use its real name. They call it a forbidden pit of despair. What happened to these people? How were the Rata Novans defeated? Was it Elder Dragons? You know, was it a, a concentrated attack from Primordus? Well, no, it wasn't at all. It was the Chark. So there were some early theories when Heart of Thorns first came out suggesting that the Chark were accidental byproducts and creations from the Rata Novans who had built this race trying to learn more ways to tap into ley line energy and they were manipulating some local bugs and then they they, they flared out and there is some evidence to support this. Uh, unfortunately though I'm not a big believer in this. There is a, uh, a document you can read in Rata Novus which talks about some of the Rata Novans first contact with the Chark and they kind of just treat them as these weird bugs they have no understanding of whatsoever. In fact the name Chark Chuck itself, that doesn't come from the Ratanovans who were destroyed by them. The word Chuck, the, the Ratanovans only got from the local Hylek that had been living nearby and had already interacted with the Chuck a lot. But one thing is clear, the Chuck realized that the Ratanovans were down there, realized that the Ratanovans had much power, and especially once the Ratanovans started tapping directly into Leyline energy, this infuriated the Chuck or, or drove them primal and crazy and they went to absorb, to attack, to destroy and get everything they could from this hub of power right next to them. So it's quite a tragic story and one I quite enjoy that this uh, city that was in defiance of one great enemy was just destroyed suddenly and randomly by this totally new one for maybe completely unrelated reasons. Though the Chuck have got their own interesting mysteries, maybe we can go into it another day. So reading these Peacemaker reports can give you a really nice perspective of the downfall of the city. It's basically Alien 2. If you guys have seen that, the Chuck are aliens, and there's just hordes and hordes of hordes of them sacrificing themselves, charging down these corridors into these lasers and the, this gunfire to try and destroy them, and uh, just keep probing and keep probing, trying to find the Rotten Novan's weakness endlessly. Uh, at one point, the Peacemaker reports mentioned that uh, the Asura, the Rata Novans, had underestimated the Chuck's ability to burrow, and uh, the, they had to find new defenses. Finally, it seems that this conflict between the Chuck and the Rata Novans had been put to bed, because uh, the Rata Novans had developed a, a big defense grid, and if any Chuck were to cross it, surrounding the city in all three dimensions, if this were to happen, uh, it would send out these pulses of vibrations that would disorient and potentially then disperse the Chark threat, and we'd be fine. But it ends by quite ominously letting us know that um, if there was power fluctuations in the city, this could unfortunately cause the grid to go down and then the Chark would attack. And the final Peacemaker report says that suddenly we're getting regular blackouts. And it would seem that these blackouts caused the Chark to get through the grid and absolutely obliterate the city. Seems quite basic, right? There's definitely no manipulation or subterfuge or secret things happening behind the scenes here. Well, maybe there was. 
See, there's another type of uh, note you can find as well. These are city relocation status reports. And as this fight with the Chark uh, is being lost, we find that the Ratanovans are talking about evacuating their citizens, relocating the city, uh, or at least the citizens, right? And so uh, they say immediate evacuation notice, city defense failure is imminent. All residents must reach a surrogate alpha by 1600 hours. Gate self-destruction is scheduled for 1605. This is not a drill. So it would seem that the reason we don't see like any bodies of Ratanovans, we don't see any evidence of them having been there at all, it's just a big empty chamber, may not just be because of the 150 year time gap here, but it may be because many of them actually did manage to escape. Uh, another note says that the High Council continues to advocate migration towards the surface and that this person is glad bureaucrats don't know that the Asura are out there or they'd likely try and shut down the whole city. These all seem to be from different periods of time as the attack gets worse and worse. And then it gets even better. What really tells the story of the end of uh, Ratanovus and makes you wonder is an achievement in the Buried Insights mission called New Horizons. New Horizons is probably one of my favorite achievements that they did in all of Heart of Thorns. So this is very similar to that Halo 3 experience you'd get where you'd find terminals around the world and you'd get to see a conversation between two characters you've never met uh, about a, a time long ago. And so what we're hearing about are two Asura, two Ratanovans called Carla and Posk. And these two are trapped and amid the drama of the Chark attacking and the evacuation of the city, trying to communicate with one another. Uh, one of the messages quite ominously says this, Carla, where are you? You're worse than those bookers on the surface. The threat is worse than we forecasted. The city council has been misleading us. I'm going to try your other console. So these two eventually, for what it's worth, do seem to get out of the city. I'll talk about that in a second. But this note I just read you here is very, very interesting to me. First of all, we hear about some supposed bookers on the surface. This either could be a direct reference to actual characters trying to, uh, you know, involved with the downfall of Ratanovas, or it could just be referring to, you know, in general, haha, humans are stupid. You guys can take that however you like. But apparently the city council of Ratanovas had been misleading its people and suggesting that the Chark threat wasn't as bad as it actually was. Why were they doing this? Were they trying to shut down something that was happening in Ratanovas? Was there some sinister plot or was it just damage control? Either way, I think we will get answers on this in the end. And then even more interestingly, we find through these two Asura that actually they did manage to escape and we get to tune a console using a code that redirects and activates an Asura gate out of the city. And when you go through this Asura gate, you'll end up in a very small bonus corridor with nothing in it, just rubble and destroyed stuff all around, but a sealed off door. If you press M, look into the world map, you can actually see you're on the edge of what would appear to be another large area of the Asuran city. So there are two divergent paths you can go here. Number one, you can believe this is a totally different Asuran city that was founded after Ratanovas fell and that the people of Ratanovas are there now. Or you can believe it's still technically Ratanovas, it's just that this is the inner city, which is referred to a couple of times, and that actually the people of Ratanovas are still there and are still operating. And though it would look like they have a, a destroyed city and all flushed out, the reason we don't find any of them is because they simply just went a little bit deeper down. And what this would mean, very excitingly, is that in Living World, this door may open up Timey is currently there in the living world, learning what she can from the Dragon Lab, and she may find a way to access these, these deeper chambers where we may find more Asura from Ratanovas, uh, Fallout Vault style. This could be very, very interesting. The, the other choice, if you don't believe it's the inner city, is people have actually proposed that because of the way this looks on the world map, that this could just be straight up another flying city. And this is a much more interesting direction to go in. Uh, for example, in the Tangled Depths map, if you try to see where this door might lead, say by going to the Scar Bivouac waypoint and then, uh, you know, looking over the cliffs directly where it should be, what you'll find ArenaNet's done in the Tangled Depths map is they've taken these large green vine walls we saw all over the place in the betas and they've dumped them to deliberately obscure your view just so you can't see over that cliff just in case there's a giant Asuran city back there. And in fact, if you do try to be a bit cheeky, you take it outside of the game a little, go to something, say, like Tyria 3D, you can actually explore the map and find that, yes, in fact, there is a huge 
uh, a Siren City asset back there, a huge side of a wall that would suggest there is like a huge extra section of the city we are yet to explore. This gets even better though in that when you look at Terrier 3D at this wall, it's quite easy to identify. What you're looking at is not some asset built for Ratasum, but this is what you find in the Fractals of the Mist. This wall, like physically in the game engine, is the exact same thing you're exploring and traveling around on the uncategorized fractal in the fractals. So this has always been one of the more mysterious fractals. We don't know where or when it's set. A floating city that looks a bit like Ratasum appears to have been exploded in half uh, and everything's mad and crazy and there's been cats everywhere. What does all of this mean? Uh, Dessa seems quite disturbed by the fractal and kind of takes a step back from it. Well, people have theorized then because these look so similar that perhaps uh, what we're seeing in the uncategorized fractal is Rata Novus 2.0 after the downfall of the Chuck. Perhaps someone tried to fly out of the sky and failed. Perhaps it was in the sky for a long time, then half of it fell and crashed onto the ground. These are cool theories and even could get quite believable when you get roped in and hear that, oh, Heart of Thorns, when it released, it added new dialogue to the uncategorized fractal. So clearly it is a reference. But honestly, I don't think they held up to too much scrutiny. Uh, I think that it's likely that the new dialogue in Fractals of the Mist was actually just dialogue that played very inconsistently and was bugged. After all, it has had a wiki page since 2013, not just when Heart of Thorns ended up releasing. Uh, I think that the reason that the wall in Tangled Depths, bear in mind a wall no player is supposed to see in the actual game, I think that is just looking like the uncategorized Fractal because it was an asset they had and they just dumped it in there so that it would make sense as something of a placeholder because it's not supposed to be scrutinized by the player base and when you even look at it in in lore story how could it be that a, a floating city got flown out of the jungle or destroyed or whatever when it we are talking about an area so close to Ratasum not just Ratasum but many Asuran labs and many well populated areas of the Tarnished Coast at that time Surely, at some point in the 150 years since this destruction occurred, someone would have ventured out there and seen that there's this huge wreck, right? Uh, and then further, I think that the biggest nail in the coffin, really, is the uncategorized fractal is showing golem variants and technology that is, uh, you know, contemporary. It's up to this time. It's it's modern technology that the Asura are using, not this old stuff that Zin had been pioneering and had been using in that original city. I know how badly people want to see an answer to the uncategorized fractal, but I wonder whether it really has one at all. Increasingly as time goes by, I feel more and more like that fractal is just an example of how wild, unpredictable, unstable the fractals can be and dealing with creating mini realities in the mists. I think the uncategorized fractal, rather than being something that we should really hold up to a lot of scrutiny, is just representing bizarre and weird aspects of Dessa's psyche. Uh, listen to this quote from Jeff Grubb, right? Jeff Grubb, one of the chief law and world builders of this franchise, only very recently left the company. He described in an interview the mists as this. He says the mists resonate from the worlds around them, forming bits of their own reality, islands of existence that reflect the histories of their worlds. I don't think there was really a place that was floating in the sky and half destroyed and there was a mad inventor who built loads of cat golems. I think this is just a scary, weird reality that has been formed based on the emotions and memories of Dessa as she fixates on her boyfriend stolen away by the consortium and uh, she also has a little bit of a love of cats in there and one of her greatest fears may be the destruction of Ratasum or something and then there you go and she has to leave and she can't explain it. I think that may be as close as we ever get to an explanation for that one, but uh, who knows what ArenaNet have got in store for us. The Fractals and their whole bizarreness is maybe worthy of a completely different video. So back to Ratanovus one last time, back to this door. I think in summation, I can honestly say I think this is just the inner city. I think Timey will open it and indoors she should find some wonderful treats and uh, actually untouched and perhaps still inhabited areas of Ratanovus with people who have had unbridled access to lots of leyline energy and power and um, you know they've been free from moral constraints to invent to their heart's content for 150 years and who knows what that could mean. Either this or they did end up leaving and end up founding the inquest or something like that in the end. Uh, to finish the video let's look back at Zin. Now at the start of this video, I gave you guys a brief summary of his life before he went to found Ratanovus, but I left out one 
key detail. And that was this. Those original quests where the Guild Wars 1 player character unlocked the Golem MOX and Zin needed your help. He needed your help because of a mysterious stranger who had manipulated him into building these golems while they had secretly been programmed to kill and assassinate some of the human leaders. Uh, the princes of Vabi were being targeted, the emperor in Cantha, and Princess Salma at the Temple of the Ages in Krita were all on the chopping block. That's right, back in Guild Wars 1, one of the final things they did was to set up this mystery, rolling into Guild Wars 2, of who this character was that had propositioned Zin and orchestrated an attack on the leaders of the human populations. Who that character is has never been revealed. And now that Zin is in the Guild Wars 2 storyline, I can't help but wonder whether this character will have some influence as well in the near future. So why doesn't Zin have a convincing end to his story? Where does it all finish for him? We don't know. There's no evidence of a day where Zin died and then the city continued on without him. It was just, he became High Council, founded the city, and then... We don't know. So I draw your attention once again back to the uh, Zin's fixation on Golomancy slowly driving him to learn about the power of souls. And also I'll remind you of Ula. Ula, the lab genius and great, uh, you know, uh, adversary of Zin's back in Guild Wars 1's time. Ula continued down this path in her own lab, uh, this idea of golemancy and necromancy. And it got to the point for her that she is still on Tyria. You can go to Ula's lab in Metrica province and that is not a hologram of her that you see Ula is actually still there. Her soul remains on Tyria to this day. A likely consequence of her work into Golomancy and Necromancy and Souls. Did Zin in Rata Novus follow the same lines? Are these great Asuran inventor adversaries still going at it? If Ula's spirit is still on Tyria, couldn't Zin's in theory be? Are we actually suggesting Zin's soul might be in the inner city? Is it possible that the reason the devs didn't give us a conclusion to Zin's story because we may actually yet meet him, as bizarre as that sounds, after so long? Well, who knows? And who knows what the eventual fate of Rata Novus is? Don't forget as well that there is Zin's secret lair. And what do those NPCs stay while they're looking at this golem? That uh, we advise them we'll have to come back after all of this is over. Well, Mordemoth's dead now. I think that's pretty much over. Right? Well, we'll have to see. Thanks very much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you're caught up to date now as well on one of the more exciting mysteries coming up. Hope you have a great evening. And I'll see you next time. You can tell by the stars. The pilot pushed his glasses up on his nose. He took the instrument in both hands and raised the frame off the bottom plate. This is the mater. He gestured to the solid brass platter, pronouncing the strange word, mater. Look at those etchings. Do they seem familiar? Kobe 